So yesterday I asked you, um, let's see, think here. basically I asked you this. I said, how many ways can I arrange the letters of the word seen? 24 ways, all right? So four blanks, right? Four, three, two, one, which is four factorial, which works out to 24 ways. Now, when we take a word in which we have similar letters, all right, that reduced the amount of ways in which we could we could do this question. So what we did is we took the number of ways in which you can arrange four letters, which is four factorial, and we divided it by the number of like letters, which is two factorial. So that gave us 12 ways in which we could do this question. So far, so good. Okay. So that's an easy question. If you go through the, the book and they just ask you, they give you words and they say, how many ways can you do this? Or if they give you objects like they did in example one, how many ways can you do this? And you divide by the number of like terms. The reason we divide by the no number of like terms is if I have two letters, let's say A and E, there's two factorial ways in which I can arrange those letters, right? But E and E is the same thing, so I have to divide by the number of ways in which I can arrange the order of E and E. Now, where this is going to, uh, um, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to do a question like example two, very similar uh, to it. Ricardo jumps into a taxi to travel eight blocks west and three blocks north across town. Assuming there are no one-way streets, how many routes could the taxi driver take traveling only west or north? Okay, this question is, um, we are going to... We are going to do this question again in pre-calculus, and we're going to do it the same way. But there is an alternative way in which we do this because it can get complicated. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we, it's set up in this class as a permutation to find it. So it's what? Eight blocks west and three blocks north. So. So, I need to go from here to right here. Okay, I just want to make this a little bit bigger. much of that. Alright, so let's do this. So I'm going from here to here. Okay. Now, it says I want to go eight blocks to the west and three blocks to the north. I can't go back and I have to just go west and north at this point. So how many ways can I do this? Well, the number of ways in which we can do this, I can treat this like a like permutation. So how many blocks am I going total? 11. 11. So I can go 11 factorial. How many blocks to the west am I going? 8 factorial and 3 factorial. So I can do it this way. Now, back to what we did yesterday. If I asked you to do this without the calculator, okay, I take the largest number that I can cancel out. So at this point, it would be the 8 factorial. So if I cancel 8 factorial with 11 factorial, what would I be left with? No. No. If I cancel all of the 8 factorial out with as much as I can in 11 factorial, what would I be left with on top? Very good. 11 
times 10 times 9. Right? And then that cancels out with that guy. Then I'm left with 3 factorial on the bottom. So I go, that cancels, leaves me at 3. That cancels, leaves me at 5. So now I can do the math on this. 15 times 11, 165. So there's the answer to the question. 165 ways in which I can do this question. Can go. So this is to go from here to here. There's 165 ways. So far okay? Treat like a like permutation. I'm going to show you a way it is going to look complicated to you right now. Okay? But it really is not as complicated as, it, as it's going to seem. So this you're going to have to pay close attention right now to how I do this. And the reason I'm going to do this is I may not have a really nice setup like this. I could have two separate blocks in which I've got to combine them. So to do this, this is a new method. You've never seen this before. I start by taking a line here. And I draw it right, a diagonal. How many ways can I go from here to here? There's only one way, right? So I put a one here. And how many ways can I go from one to here? One. So far, so good? Be straightforward, right? Okay, I'm going to try. I mean, what's the easiest way to do it? Well, I'll try drawing it myself. But. Okay. Now, to go from here, or sorry, from here to here, there's still only one way. Agreed? And then to go from here to here, there's still only one way in which you can go. To go from this spot right here to right there, how many ways is there to go? There's two. So I put a two right here. Okay, so far. Basically, all I have to do is add this to this to get that. Okay? Everybody follow me so far? Seth, follow this, please. So now I'm going to go another diagonal here. That. So from here to here is one, and to there is one. Now, okay, one and two make three right there. Two and one make three right there. So far, so good. That would be the next, the next diagonal, yes. Okay, so we keep going with these diagonals now. Okay. One and three make four there. Three and three make six here. Three and one make four here. Should be a one there. You following? Any questions? All I'm doing is adding up the two bottom squares to get the next diagonal. That's all there is to it. Okay. Color again. Four and six is ten. Six and four is ten. Four and one make five. That's about right there. Draw my diagonal again. Twenty. Fifteen. Six. One. Thirty-five, twenty-one, seven, one. Does everybody understand what's happening still? Okay. Morgan, not really. Trying to figure it out. Okay, Morgan, what would go right here? <clears throat> what goes right there? Um... I don't know. 
How do I get this one? <coughs> Add this with this to get that. That's 56. 21 and 7 make 28. 7 and 1 make 8. You see what I'm doing? I add up the two corner bo boxes to get the next one. So let's do this again, Morgan. Okay, how do I get this guy? 56 and 28. 84. Right? 28 and 8, 36. 8 and 1 makes 9. So far, so good? Yep. Makes sense now, yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so how do I get this one then? Thirty and twenty. Thirty-six and nine make forty-five. Forty-five. Okay. And what's going to end up with right here? One sixty-five. Yeah. It's like a puzzle. Yeah. So we ended up with the same thing. Now, like this way. Like this way, obviously way easier to calculate to do it. But there's going to be a question. Or first of all, any any questions about this? Do we understand how that worked? Okay. So you just take your diagonal on that first block, and there's only going to be one way to get to those. And then remember, add them up to get your next one, and you and you add up your corners. So okay with this? All right. So the reason that, I'll just leave that up there. The reason that we do, we do this method is because you may end up with something like this. And it's going to ask you to go from here to here. Okay? So we can't, even though we know we're moving, what is that, one, two, three, four, five, six, six blocks to the west and four blocks to the north, I can't use this permutation to do it, okay? I want to use this method here, like that, and then that, and then keep it going this way. So if I use that method, then I can, this method here, then I can easily get from here to here. It's not, it's not obviously very tough to do. But it allows us to find a root when it's not so nicely set up like this. Okay? So you'll use that every time you've only got one set of blocks, like one complete set of blocks. And that's it. Okay? And we'll have. And we got that down? No, yep. Um, take a look at page 103. In the right margin, where that guy's on the diagonal like that, that's the type of question that you want to use this method to do. Yeah. Well, you basically actually can go straight across on that one. Yeah. Just cross the blocks. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Morgan, you got this guy down? No, yeah. All right. I want you to open up to 4.5. And then, uh, then I'm going to let you work today. Okay. Combinations of objects or outcomes, order does not matter. So when our objects are chosen from a set of n different objects, there are always fewer combinations than permutations. Okay. I explained this to you before. You're going to work with permutations and you're going to work with combinations. A permutation, order matters. 
And I'll be more specific as to what to look for, but there's certain words that specify whether order matters. A combination is you're just selecting like objects, okay, in order to, uh, or sorry, you're just selecting a certain number of objects from a group, okay? Now, the best way to explain this to you is this. The Lotto 649. Okay. You know, do you know what the probability of winning the Lotto 649 is? It's very, it's like more slim than you You can get stuff by like Okay. Here's how this works. All right. A permutation we did was this. N factorial over n minus r factorial, right? Mm -hmm. A combination is similar with one addition. That second part on the bottom there, r factorial. The difference between the two, this is selecting and ordering them. This is just selecting them, okay? The R factorial represents the number of ways in which I can order something. So if I divide it out, I'm going to have way more um, possibilities for a permutation than I am going to a combination. Okay, now I want to explain this to you using the lot of 649. 649 is named because you're picking six numbers from 49. That's why it's the six four, lot of 649. So, I am selecting six numbers from the lot of 649. On your calculator, go into your calculator, 49C6. No. 49C6. So, you got to go 49, you got to go math, probability, to combination, 6, and then hit enter. 13,983,816. There is only one correct card, right? So the chances of you winning it are 1 in 13,983,816. All right, now, the lot of 649 does not constitute that you have to get those numbers in order. So imagine having to select the correct six numbers and then put them in order. That becomes a permutation. Now I'll punch that into your calculator. 49P6. So imagine you had to pick the six correct numbers, but they had to be in the exact way they come. 1.006. You would have a 1 in 10 billion chance of winning the lot of 649 if you had to actually select the balls in the order that they come out. You do have to? No. So the difference between a permutation and a combination. Permutation means that the order in which you select those things matters to you. Combination just simply means that I have to select them. It doesn't matter how I arrange them. The first thing that you should do on your cheat sheet, permutation order is important. Combination, you are just selecting. Now there's going to be some buzzwords. We're going to go through a few of the buzzwords, okay, to indicate from question to question what the permutations are and what combinations are, okay? So we will go through that as we go through these questions. We'll go through that. First things first. 
if they specify a position, first, second, or third. That means that they're looking for order. So first, second, or third. You've got 16 horses running a race. I want to know what is the way in which I can pick the first horse, the second horse, and the third horse. That's a permutation. I'm looking for order. Out of this class, I want to select a president, a vice president, and a treasurer. Order is important. Those are specific positions. So if they ask you to arrange the numbers in order, or they ask you to put people in certain places, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, whatever it is, order is important. That is the permutation. Okay? When we talk about this, NCR, some math teachers say N choose R. Choosing from a selection of objects is a combination. Choose 10 out of the 20 people. Choose the hearts in a deck of cards. All right? That is a combination. So the word choose we use to describe this, that's a combination. All you're doing is selecting and not ordering. What about the combination you want? Okay, so, well, yeah, there's the irony, isn't it? Right? That's what I would think the two of yeah. lock is a combination, but it's a... Yeah, but really, it's a permutation lock. Have that certain order in order. Except 100% correct. Because you're absolutely right. That's right. You're absolutely right. So math, in math terms, you have to have a permutation in order to get that block done because the numbers have to be in the sequential order. You're 100% correct. But we still call it a combination block. Okay? All right? So we're getting the gist then. We're understanding the difference between a permutation and a combination. Let's quickly go through. Um, I'm just going to go through reading these words with you so that we can decipher the difference between a combination and a permutation. Okay? How many different permutations are there of three objects chosen from a set of five? Well, that was easy. It's a permutation. How many different ways are there of arranging each subset of three objects? Arranging. Permutation. Permutation. There's one of your buzzwords. Arranging. Leads you to a permutation. How many different combinations are there of three objects chosen from a set of five? Combination. How many permutations can be found using all five of the symbols shown? Permutation. How many combinations? Combination. Write out all the permutations. So far, all of this page, through question three on page 105, says the words combination or permutation. How about question four? At a restaurant, 12 friends are ordering dessert. Everyone wants the strawberry pavlova, but there are only four left. In how many ways can the four strawberry pavlovas be distributed if no one is willing to share? Combination? Order doesn't matter, so that would be a combination. Okay, good. Uh, permutation, subset, permutation. Okay. 4.6, I'm just... I'm going through this, uh, I'm going to go through this again with you on Monday, but I want you to just get a really good idea as to the difference, but you really don't need it until 4-7, so I'll leave that today. All right, so for Monday, we should be to the end of 4.5 for Monday. There are fewer questions in this, in chapter four than any of your other chapters. There's like eight or four questions in these sections, right? So, to getting, getting them done, and they're not long questions either. 
So asking to get done to the end of 4.5. And if you are done tomorrow, I'm not here tomorrow. If you are finished, you keep going on combinations. I've explained everything there is to know about combinations today. So is this all you did not? No, this this is just an introduction to this. When you take it into pre-calculus, it leads into something. It leads because it, it joins up with probability. Okay? Yeah, there's a, just the start of it. And we're just this this applied just dabbles. It just touches on a on a, a lot of different things. The pre-calculus gets you into the meat and potatoes of a lot of these. Go ahead, Gary. It says permutations is order and important. What's the Definition for combination. Combination is just a selection. Oh. Yeah, that I don't know. Or choosing. Like choosing might order. be the other the other way to do it, but order is not important. So, we'll, we're going to look at a number of uh, of uh, ways in which they word the questions so that you'll have, you'll have a good idea. Okay. Yeah, Morgan. My question doesn't really talk about what we're currently dealing with, but where are you at? I'm at 4.3. Okay, that's fine. Just give me, can we wrap up today's lesson then? We're okay? All right, let's go back then. What page are you on, Morgan? Um, right now I'm looking at page 95. There's two questions here that don't seem right. At 4.2? Not, not the questions, the answers. Where are you at, Morgan? Specifically, please. B and C. Uh, three, one, two. Yeah, three. Question 4.2. Okay, so page 95, 3B. That's what you're at. Yeah. Okay, Morgan, I want you to look at something. I put this on the board for you yesterday. So I want you to understand what's going on here. 9 times 8 factorial. Right? Right. What is 8 factorial? Um, 8 times 7, times 6, times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So then if I multiply it by 9, then it becomes 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Agreed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can rewrite that as 9 factorial then. Yeah. Morgan, follow me here, please. Do you agree or not? I agree, yeah. So then what if I did this? 10 times 9 times 8 factorial. It would be 10 factorial. It would be 10 factorial. Great. N, N minus 1, N minus 2, factorial. It would be N factorial. There's your answer for B. I had that right, but the answer key says N plus 12. How does that work? I think you're looking at the wrong answer. This is B. You're looking at the wrong answer. No, it's just the plus 12. N plus 12? Yeah. And C says N factorial. Yeah. The next question. Okay, so they've got those two switched. That's probably what's, yeah. Okay. Okay, and. Because, okay, you understand that then? Yes. Okay. Um, right. And I'm surprised I've been doing this right, but number, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you where I am. Page 98 on number 6. Yep. On A, I got, I did it two different ways. I did 9 factorial divided by and take away 3 factorial with brackets equals 504. Then I did 9P3 equals 504. And I looked the answer key, it's wrong. But number 7, the next question, I did the exact same thing, got an answer, and the answer was right. So I think number 6A is wrong on the answer key. Okay. Let's have a look at that. The fourth, fifth, and sixth digits of a phone number, such as 403, 555, 1234, are called the exchange. How many exchanges are possible if each digit from 0 to 9 are used at most once? So we're just concentrating on the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth, right? Right. Okay. So I have how many decisions to make then? Three. Three decisions. Good? Yep. I knew how many, that. How many choices do I have for the first one? Uh, nine. Wait. Another. Ten. 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 I thought there were nine. Okay. And then? 
9, and then 8. So there's 720. So our question is completely different than the next one. Okay, well let's worry, let's worry about this guy. Do you get this? Yes. Okay, so is that right answer? Okay, we'll go if it's the right answer. Yes. Thanks. Okay, now, if the only exchange not allowed is 555, this is a fake exchange is often used in films and TV programs and math books. Okay. If the exchange 555 is not allowed, all right, then I have what? Okay. There's an easier way, but yeah, you're, you're right. Okay. But then you'd have to do it. Okay, so let me explain what Rory just said. She said quietly. She's saying that the first blank is a nine. How come? Can't use a five? Okay. Then how many do I have a choice of here? Okay. So a ten, yeah? Yeah. And then here? I can I can repeat this this time, right? Yeah. That's what it's saying. Okay. Okay. So there'd be ten here, right? Yeah. Is that the answer then? Yeah. Hmm? Yes. No. Mm -hmm. Nine hundred? Okay. Here's what I want you to do. This is a this is a very, very important thing to learn right now because you'll see this a lot in this section and in probability. How many numbers can I not, like, all right, here's my question to you then. i got to do this differently. How many possible ways can I actually, how many numbers can I actually get here? What is the total amount of numbers. If I can use repetition, if I can use repetition, how many numbers total can I get for a three-digit number using the ten digits? Eli, what is it? It's a thousand, right? Ten, tens, and ten, correct? So I have a thousand ways in which I can Get a three-digit number using ten digits with repetition. Agree? Of those thousand, how many of them are five, five, five? One. Subtract one. The answer is nine hundred ninety-nine. Right? Okay. All right. We get that. Is there a way that I could have done this? And got the same answer? Yeah. Very tough to do using this fundamental counting principle. Because you have different you'd have to have different cases. You have to have the first case not being a five, second case not being a five, and the middle number maybe, third case maybe not being a five, right? This method right here. I want everybody to have a look at the board, please. This method right here, you use a lot in probability. Or you use it a lot if you have at least something happening. You take the total number of ways in which something can happen, and you subtract the number of ways in which it can't happen. That's the easiest way to do questions like this. That's the total ways in which I can find three-digit numbers, right? Thousand. I'm just going to subtract the one way it can't happen, and then I got my answer. So sometimes you're going to get a question that says at least this many. All right, that's the way I would do that question. Take the number of ways in which it can happen, subtract the number of ways it can't happen, and then you get exactly what you want.
Okay, we're going to see this a lot with the combinations, a little bit more of the combinations, not a lot, but a little bit more. All right, there's the answer to that question, Morgan. Does that make sense to you? Uh, <clears throat> the top part was 720, I figured it out, but you know, with, with the... This I'm, is nothing to us. This is what we need right here. Morgan, if I'm choosing three-digit number from the ten digits, yeah. and repetition is allowed... I have a choice of 10, I have a choice of 10, and I have a choice of 10. Okay. Right? Now why take away one when you get the answer? Because you can't use 555. You can't use 555 as your, that's what the question says. Right? Oh, okay. It says you're not allowed to use 555. So there's only one way in which you can have 555. Okay. Okay, you want me to go through seven with you as well? Uh, I got A right, B, I would like to go over B. Child's birthday party, prizes are awarded for best costume, best craft, and best decorated cookie. In how many different ways can prizes be awarded to the 15 guests at the party under each of these conditions? Each guest receives at most one prize. So how do we do that one? How many decisions am I making? Best costume, best craft, best decorated cookie. How many decisions do I have to make? Three. Three. And how many choices do I have for the first one? How many people are at this party? Fifteen. Fifteen. Can they win the next one as well? Each guest receives at most one prize. So then 14 and 13, right? Now, notice I'm doing this every time. I'm using the fundamental counting principle. Right? That's me in my comfort zone right there. There's no reason why you can't do this. 15 P3, it makes, so to some of you that might make more sense. You're choosing three from 15 and you have to arrange them. Yeah, 15 P3 clicks more with me because okay. I see the examples up here yeah. and I look back and I find clues to how to figure out number seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at B. Each guest may receive any or all of the prizes. 15, 15, and 15. Okay, so 15 cubed would be your answer for B. Because the guests, the guests get all the prizes, right? Yeah, they can. I now I see how that would work, yeah. Okay, so again, I have three blanks for my decisions, right? And I have that. Okay, Morgan, are you better now? Uh, yeah. Does anybody else have questions from yesterday? Oh, uh, I guess that's not everything. Uh, number number five. Page? Uh, 98, same page we were working on. So, n would have to be greater than what? You're just looking at your denominator there, right? Right. Oh, I I haven't explained this yet. This is your tip that's in there. Zero factorial is one. Okay. Let me just explain that because I feel like you needed to explain the rest of the morning here. If I have uh. A group of three, and I'm choosing three out of that group of three. How many ways can I do that? One. There's only one way in which I can do that, right? Yeah. So if I go 
3C3, that would give me 3 factorial over 3 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial. Okay? That's 0. So I'd have 3 factorial over 3 factorial, which is 1. 0 factorial is 1. There's only one way in which I can do that. So that's why if I end up with this, there's only one way you can do it. There's only one way you can choose nobody, or there's only one way you can choose everybody. And that's one. So that's why when it works out to zero factorial, you get that. Okay, so on the bottom there, what does your n factorial have to be? It has to be two or greater. Right? Right. Okay, I, I wouldn't be too concerned with that five. Okay. All right. Anybody else have questions? You're going to run into issues on page 102 with the methods I just showed you today. So, okay. So four or five needs to be done. You got today, tomorrow, and we'll be starting that four or six, or at least going through four or six on Monday. Mm-hmm.